So a couple years ago, I, I will say I have a confession. I tend to write my books about a decade too early. My, my uh, agent is like, why would you have written Lioness Arising 10 years ago? Why didn't you wait till there was a song about Lion? I'm like, I, I'm sorry. And, and why would you say things like Girls With Swords? Why would you do all these different things? And so I wrote a book in 2017, that means it comes out in 2018, called Adamant, Finding Truth in a Universe of Opinions. How many of you know right now emotions and feelings about something is the ultimate truth? Everybody thinks they can have their own truth. Well, I'm just going to tell you right now, you can have your own story. And you can have something that is true of you. But the truth does not change. And the truth is not a what. The truth is a who. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one, no one comes to the Father except through him. Okay. I feel like you guys are ready for this. All right. So I don't know if you know this. John is Italian. And I am Sicilian. Italians are known for feeding people. Sicilians are known for killing people. So there is a little bit of a difference in our approach in parenting, a little bit of a difference in our approach in preaching. Uh, did you show them our family? Okay, awesome. You guys didn't get to see it. I'm, I'll put it up really quick. Okay, here's our family. Here's our family. So we have four sons. This is your fourth year. We got four daughter-in-laws, finally. Thank God, one of our sons got married. And then we have a brand new little sweet baby that came out. Look at that, oh my gosh, Azariah. So that is Azariah Jax, what a cool name. They're calling him Ajax. There we go, there we go. Because I can't even figure out how to spell Azariah. Okay, and Azariah was a prophet who confronted a religious spirit. And so I'm hoping that I can unpack three things for you. First of all, I want to talk to you about the reality of our God. Second, I'm going to talk about the reality of our day. And third, I'm going to talk about the reality of us. So I'm going to open up, and because I'm Sicilian, I'm going to go to the book of Romans, because those are my people. <laughs> Romans chapter one, verse 19. I'm gonna read it out of the message paraphrase. Go ahead and grab it in any other version and follow along. But this one kind of just brings it home. Romans 1, 19 says, but the basic reality of God is plain enough. Open your eyes and there it is. By taking a long and thoughtful look at what God has created, people have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see. Eternal power, for instance, and the mystery of his divine being. So nobody has a good excuse. Everything in creation declares the existence of our creator people especially in california have no excuse because you got the mountains you've got the ocean you've got a, an environment where can i just say everything grows perhaps not everything should grow here the way it flourishes here but everything that surrounds us says there is a god who created us so that nobody has a good excuse. I fly a lot. I have 4 million miles just on United Airlines. And I never walk in and say, oh, I'm a preacher because the people next to you will change seats. And so they will usually ask me like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm an author. And then we start talking because everybody thinks they should write a book. They're like, I'm gonna write a book. I'm like, hallelujah. Every single person in the entire universe 
feels like they should write a book because the truth is you have been written about in a book. I don't know if you know there is a book in heaven that's actually keeping records of everything. So anyway, so uh, they, they will usually like shut me down as soon as they hear I'm a preacher. Like, well, what about people in China? What about a people on a deserted island? God's going to send them to hell. Oh, I'm sorry. It says by taking a long and thoughtful look at creation, we can all have a revelation that there is a creator. So John and I are of the, of the older persuasion. John doesn't like me to use the word older. Let's say mature. Okay, mature. We are more mature. And when we used to host guests, we hosted uh, a very frightening older man uh, named Lester Summerall. We were terrified of him. He was always casting out demons, talking about demons. I was pretty sure when he invited John and I to go to breakfast that maybe I had a demon that was going to get cast out at the breakfast. I mean, I was like casting everything possible out of myself before we met with him for breakfast. And, and he began to tell John and I some stuff that was kind of scary. We were 24 and 25 the year was 1984, and Lester told John and I that he saw a day where people's lives would be controlled by a box they hold in their hands. Wow. Y'all looked at an iPhone recently? They are actually saying people's posture are changing because we don't lift our eyes and look at creation. We lower our heads and bow to our phones. So we're kind of missing some stuff that God wants to highlight. So that is the reality of our God. All creation, no excuses. He reveals himself. And all you have to do is ask. I remember asking. I remember asking and saying, God, I... I know you are, but I don't know how to find you. And it wasn't long before my life crossed paths with this one, and I heard the gospel. Romans 1.21 goes on to say, okay, it says, what happened was this. Because how many of you are like, what is happening? Yeah, anybody else feel like that? Is that just something I'm feeling? He's like, what happened was this. People knew God perfectly well. But they, when they didn't treat him like God, refusing to worship him, they trivialized themselves into silliness and confusion so that there was neither sense nor direction left in their life. They pretended to know it all, but they were illiterate regarding life. See, it's one thing to acknowledge God. It's quite another thing to worship him. And when you worship him, you acknowledge him as supreme. And the truth is, the more I pursue God, the more he reveals me. The more I become human, the more I become more of a reflection of who he is. As I see him, I actually become more like him. But when we're stupid, which is kind of where we're kind of celebrating stupid right now in our culture... We trivialize ourselves. What does that mean? It means to make less of than we really are. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we cannot trivialize ourselves into silliness and confusion and become illiterate regarding life. Oh, have a, a lot of knowledge, but no wisdom. It says they traded the glory of God who holds the whole world in his hands for cheap figurines you can buy at any roadside. So God said, in effect, if that's what you want, that's what you get. It wasn't long before they were living in a pig pen smeared with filth, filthy inside and out. And all this because they traded the true God for a fake God and worshiped the God they made instead of the God who made them. The God we bless, the God who blesses us. Oh, yes. 
Whenever we worship a God made in my own image, made in my own image, it's a lesser God. I love that we were singing a song about make us holy to guard your glory. But you know, we have a culture that's like, you're a God. Y'all, if I'm, if I'm a God, y'all are in trouble. Like at any given moment. I mean, I am through menopause, but at any given moment, there's going to be dead bodies. I mean, you do not want me to be a God. You want me to be godly. You, you don't want me to be a God. It goes on, it says, worse followed in verse 26. Refusing to know God, they soon didn't know how to be human either. Women didn't know how to be women, and men didn't know how to be men. Guys, I didn't write this. I didn't write the book of Romans. Okay. Do you actually know that right now, children are identifying as furries? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's litter boxes and pee pads at schools. And they have leashes, and they are to be acknowledged as the animal of their choice, and even led around on leashes. You guys, I'm not making this up. I wish I was. I wish I was, what, one case. No, this is happening in our schools. Women didn't know how to be women, and men didn't know how to be men. I am just going to speak very transparently with you. When John asked me to marry him, it re I made me realize, oh my gosh, I am a woman. Like I am going to play the role of wife, mother, woman. And I started to panic. And I said, you know, you're getting a really good deal. And John was like, what? okay, I'm, I'm excited about what you have to say. I said, I have a woman's body but I have a man's brain. Oh, y'all, I was way ahead of my time. Oh yeah, 1982. Woman's body, man's brain. Why? Why was I saying that? Because I had been wounded by women. And so when you are wounded by a particular gender, you will disassociate from that and think that I would find strength in pretense. But, Women acting like men is not a position of strength any more than men acting like women is a position of strength. We need women to be women and men to be men. Because male and female captures the image of God. But our culture, our culture has said, oh no, it's an issue of wounding. Let's blend the genders to bring healing. No, that will not bring healing. We need to remember what it means to be a daughter of God. We need to remember what it means to be a son of the Most High. Instead of getting confused by our culture, we need to lean in to the territory that we have left and dishonored. We need to say, what is the value of being a woman? And what is the value of being a man? You got to do that. You know, I, the first time I ever preached this was back in 2015. And people were like, nobody's self-identifying their gender. Oh, but see, John, they're from... Colorado. Colorado wants to be California really, really bad. And Boulder is the seed of California in Colorado. So in Colorado, junior high kids were shown videos of boys kissing boys. They did that for the boys. Girls kissing girls. They did that for the girls. And then they said, all right, if you had a sexual response to that, you're a lesbian or you're gay. But the truth is, if you see something sexually charged and you respond to it, it just means you are sexually wired. It doesn't mean you're gonna jump out and do something. How many of you have ever flipped through a channel and all of a sudden you see something 
that you weren't expecting to see and you physically respond because you are sexually wired and sometimes you're not supposed to be seeing the things that you happen to see. How many of you know they're sneaking a lot of stuff in? Seriously. I love the crown. I love the crown until season two. Season two, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm like, what in the world is going on there? I shut my iPad, open it back up, still going on. I was like, goodbye, Queen Elizabeth. Sorry. I'm gonna have to say goodbye to the crown because you will never have authority over the things that you choose to be entertained by. We cannot be entertained by the things that would undermine how God wove us. God wove us male and female, and it is not kind to affirm that somebody is a mistake. We have got to stop saying people are mistakes because you know what we're actually saying? God made a mistake when he made you. So ultimately who we're blaming is not the people we're blaming our creator. So we don't want to do that. Then it goes a little deeper in verse 27. It says sexually confused. They abused and defiled one another, women with women, men with men, all lust, no love. And then they paid for it. Oh, how they paid for it emptied of God and love, godless, loveless, wretches. Since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them and let them run loose. And it goes on. And then all hell broke loose, rampant evil, grabbing and grasping, vicious backstabbing. They made life hell. This is all people that people are like, are you only? No, all people who refuse to worship God as God. They made life hell on earth with their envy, wanton killing, bickering, and cheating. Look at them, mean-spirited, venomous, fork-tongued god bashers, bullies, swaggers, insufferable windbags. They keep inventing new ways of wrecking lives. They ditch their parents when they get in the way. Stupid, slimy, cruel, cold-blooded. I didn't write these words. Okay, and then it goes on to say, and it is not as if they don't know better. They know perfectly well they're spitting in God's face and they don't care. Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. I don't know if you recently saw the awards in a church service for the drag queen in New York. Prizes for those who do the worst things best. Femininity is a God-given gift. It is not one that should be sexualized. Nobody's asking for a womb or to give birth. (laughs) Okay, I'm just, there we go. Okay. All right, so that is the reality of our day. Okay, you guys, now get happy. You were chosen for this moment in time. Now, I know, I know that sometimes the church preaches truth without love, and truth without love is harsh. It's not empowering. It's legalistic. So our culture has responded by preaching love without truth. But love without truth is a lie, and lies don't set us free. It is the truth that sets us free. So here's the challenge before you and I. We're going to have to live the truth in love. Not just preach the truth. We've got to live the truth in love. And that starts with how we love one another. I love that your church is like, hey, let's target people to bless. Let's intentionally love other churches instead of discounting or discrediting, or saying we're better. I see what is happening in our culture. We have tons of people calling people out. But Jesus didn't call people out. He called them 
up. He called them to a higher standard. He spoke to the destiny. He said, okay, I see what's going on here. Let me tell you the one thing that releases you to live higher, to live how you were created. The book of Isaiah in chapter 41 says, God will show us the way he works so that you and I can live the way we are made. God's kindness is what leads people to repentance. He pours out blessing on the just and the unjust. He makes it rain on the just and the unjust. So we cannot be those who curse the very ones that God wants to bless to get them to turn back to him. So a lot of people stop there, Romans 1. But I'm going to go on to Romans 2 and talk about the reality of us. Those people are on a dark spiral downward. But if you think that leaves you on the high ground where you can point your fingers at others, think again. Every time you criticize someone, you condemn yourself. It takes one to know one. Judgmental criticism of others is a well-known way of escaping detection in your own crimes and misdemeanors. But God isn't so easily diverted. He sees right through all such smoke screens and holds you to what you've done. You didn't think, did you? that just by pointing your fingers at others, you would distract God from seeing all your misdoings and from coming down on you hard? Or did you think that because he is such a nice God, he'd let you off the hook? This is, old this is not Old Testament, it's New Testament. Better think this one through from the beginning. God is kind, but he is not soft. In kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. So that's what I want to talk about. I can't control what's going on out there, but I am responsible for my response. So I've got to let God take me firmly by the hand and lead me into a radical life change. Not just yeah, yeah, you know what? We, we all are immoral, horrible people. And, you know, we just, but the thing is, I, you know, Christians are just forgiven. They're not perfect. Oh, the scripture says, be thou perfect. So we have to be perfected. As we pursue him, we are transformed. So I was an amazing, exceptional heathen. I did not get saved till I was 21 years of age. I was driving home from the University of Arizona. I, I did like too long of a drive. I was high on Vivran. You know, it was like no-dose Vivran kind of thing. And I am screaming at the top of my lungs, I'm on the highway to hell. And I realized in the middle of ACDC's promise that I possibly was on the highway to hell. And I remember thinking, wait, I have become everything I never wanted to be. I have compromised every single moral. I have compromised every single standard. I remember just feeling so aware of my lost condition. And when that happens, you go out to party and it's not fun anymore. You're like, I wish this was fun still. And I remember I turned to one of the college dorm guys and I said, don't you ever wonder if there's more. Don't you ever wonder if there's something more. And he was like, you seem like you're living in the more. I'm like, I'm living in the less. I'm living in the less, but I don't know how to get to the more. Wow. And he told me about this crazy tennis player leading an all-campus Bible study on Purdue's campus. And he's like, well, if you have any Christian questions, you should ask this guy. And I was like, no, not him. He is the one that every time I see him, he's like, wow, you look tired. He's like, he's looking into my soul. Why? 
And I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not tired. I want, no, no, not him. He's the Christian guy. I do not want to talk to Mr. Oh, you look tired. I'm like, no, no. But you know, there's that thing that happens when you got a praying mama. And all I remember is looking at John, he's entering a building. And I thought to myself, if I slow down, he won't see me. And he won't say the truth that I can't get to sleep at night unless I have drank a large amount of alcohol. I grind my teeth at night. I used to put my bottom teeth into the roof of my mouth and I would wake up with blood in my mouth. So I'm like, he's, he's almost in the building. And all of a sudden, I don't know how this happened. I said, hey, why did I just yell at the tired man? And he, he turns around and I'm like, somebody had already told me, you know you've been cussing a lot in front of the Bible study guy. Like, you know you've said a lot of things you probably shouldn't say in front of the Bible study guy. And I was like, I don't want him to think I'm a bad person, even though I am. So I, he turns around and I said, so, um, I have a mom who thinks she's been healed of cancer. What do you think of that? I think she's crazy. She also thinks she's like speaking in tongues like an apostle. I'm like, so what do you, you know, I have some questions. I made it, made it sound like I was trying to protect my mom. You know, I have some questions I need to ask you. And John is like, you know what? Um, I'm going away for the 4th of July, and you can, you can call me when I get back if you're, you're serious. And I thought, in your dreams, I am not calling you. I am not calling you, skinny tennis player. Heck no. So I didn't call him. I did not call him. But he called me. He called me. He did. All right, babe. And he said, hey, we're, we're hosting a Bible study picnic. And all I heard was free food. That's really all I heard. And I thought, okay, I could do that from five to seven. And then I will like go out and I will go out partying. And so I was like, sure, that sounds awesome. And I didn't know it was a date. I thought it was like, like, hey, you know, 80 people are coming. And if you want to come. And so I always like held my options loosely. Yeah. And... Then he calls me a little later in the week. He's like, so what do you want, hot dogs or hamburgers? I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, how many people would you ask? And he said, I, just you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm one-on-one -on -one with the Christian. I was like, uh, okay, I, I, I probably want hamburgers. So we go to this, we, we go to this picnic and you know, you gotta love those Christian girls. They're all coming up to me like, I'm praying for you. I'm like, I, that feels angry. That feels like angry prayers. I don't know if I want you praying for me. What, what exactly are you praying? And why is everybody praying for me angry prayers? Why? Well, I, I didn't know that I had entrapped the Bible study leader. And the Bible study leader, people had eyes on him. But, you know, then this girl that's showing up at breakfast in a bikini top and cut off shorts, she's come to the Bible study. And so I just remember it was getting really awkward. So I tried to be nice. I thought Christians are nice. So I like cleared the table and did things like that, trying to fool everybody. See, I'm a Christian. I clear, I clear my own plates. And we all got in a circle. You guys, you have powerful worship. No, no, no. In 1981, we had to see, sing things like, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Uh, yeah, you, okay. So angry, angry heathen in a circle with Christians singing, I got the joy, joy. I wanted to tackle all of them. And I'm like, this is the most, I didn't know where to look. People are like lifting their hands. I'm like, do you have a question? I mean, when you're in college and people lift their hands, they have a question and they're making me nervous. I'm like, put your hand down. Put your, and so I have the song sheet. I'm like shaking the song sheet. I'm like, for the love of God. Look at your song sheet. Put your hand down. These people are stupid. And so I just was like, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here and go get a drink. But then I looked down and there was a song called Robes of Righteousness. And it said in the lyrics that when God would look at me, he would no longer see me. 
And I don't know what you've come from, but I came from shame. I came from compromise, darkness. I remember hearing the Holy Spirit say, you need a covering. You are covered in sin. And I elbowed John and I said, is this true? And he said, is what true? That God could look at me and not see me. And that night we went walking on the campus and John preached from Genesis to the book of Revelations. I began to panic, panic, because I had seen the end of the movie Thief in the Night. And I knew that people that weren't saved got their head cut off. And I began to get nervous that this guy was gonna disappear in the rapture thing, and I was gonna be left on the park bench with my head cut off. So I finally just said, I, I need to do this. What do I need to do? I need to do this Christian thing. Do we light candles? What, what needs to happen? Like, and he just said, you need to confess your sins. I'm like, I don't remember them all. I don't remember them all. He was like, you can say, I'm a sinner. I said, I can totally say that. I can say, I'm a sinner. And so John led me through a salvation prayer. And he said, now you're whole again. Spirit, soul, and body. And I said, so you're saying I can eat cheese now? He's like, what? I said, you just said that I was whole, spirit, soul, and body, and I have lactose intolerance. I want to eat cheese. So now that I'm a Christian, Christians eat cheese? Is that what you're saying to me? And John was like, oh, my gosh. So he was like, all right, let's, let's pray again. So we, we, he holds my hand. He's like, say, Jesus. I was like, Jesus, thank you, thank you for healing me of lactose intolerance. He had me say it because he was so nervous he couldn't even remember what I had. And all of a sudden, I felt this warmth come into my stomach and untie all the knots that had been in my stomach since I was 15. I knew I was healed. I went back to my dorm room and I was like, Jesus, I need you to wait in the hall. Wait in the hall wait in the hall there's there's some stuff in here now i need you to wait and then i go in i dump all the beer i dump why did i have pornography i don't know i don't know i dump all the pornography you know when you're a heathen you just do crazy stuff and then i was like jesus you can come in then i spent about an hour and a half looking for the book of paul because John had said, Paul said this, and Paul said that. And I was like, where is the book of Paul? Where is the book of Paul? I can't find the book of Paul. Okay, guys, no, zero, biblical frame of reference. I finally stand my way Bible that was in the dorm. I didn't have a Bible, are you kidding me? Stand my way Bible. I was like, please open to the book of Paul. And it opens up to Corinthians where it says, if any man be in Christ, they're a new creation. And I look, and it's Paul. I'm like, I thought he'd written two letters. I thought that was it. My chances were so good on that opening. I remember John discipled me. He poured into me. He knew I was a piece of work, so he gave me an entire suitcase of cassette tapes yeah 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 we're that old cassette tapes and i drove back to the university of arizona listening to cassette tapes but that wasn't enough praying in tongues because i knew i needed to renew my mind and then when i got back to the university of arizona i began to walk the halls of my sorority and I had my hands on the walls and I called my sorority sisters out by name, out of a kingdom of darkness into a kingdom of light. I used to pray in tongues in the shower. They're like, what's, what's going on in there? Guys, when you ask God to take you firmly by the hand, and leads you into a radical, 
life change. Not a marginal. Okay, you know, maybe we're just not going to celebrate Halloween the way we used to. I'm sorry, that is not going to cut it anymore. We are in a battle between dark and life, truth and lies, and we have to be radical. Radical in love, radical in faith, radical in our own lives. Radical. So, I just want to know, who is here that wants to get radical? All right. I need to warn you about a couple of things. If you ask God to take you firmly by the hand and lead you into a radical life change, the first thing that changes is he puts your, his finger on your heart. We all have unique giftings and anointings, and God wants to do something where he separates the pure from the impure. He wants a prophetic people that we can speak, and God will watch over our words to perform them and not allow one of them to fall to the ground unfulfilled. He's going to do heart surgery on you first. I'm just warning you. I remember what happened when I asked God to excavate my life. Two weeks later, I'm like, landscape it. Landscape my life. I did not mean to say excavate. Accessorize my life. Make it pretty on the outside. But when we ask God to give us truth in our inner parts, he begins with us. So we don't point to the culture. We point to us so that we can rescue the culture. Because we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness and high places that exalt themselves against people we love, knowing God. So if you are ready to do heart surgery, that was a word that Dr. Mike had for me. Do you remember? He said, I I saw you robing up and I saw you doing heart surgery. The word of God is a two-edged sword. With one side it cuts and at the same time it heals. And so the two edges of cutting away and healing so that we can be his mouthpieces is something he wants to do. So this book out there, If any of this spoke to you, if any of it you're like, hey, I don't know if I really believe what she's saying. I get that. This book was a shock for me when I wrote it. But we need to live truth in a universe of opinions. So if you're still, after all that warning, willing to ask God to take you firmly by the hand and lead you into a radical life change, I want you to stand to your feet. Because we can have comfortable Christianity. I just want you to close your eyes and lift your hand up and say, I don't want to search my life. Say, say, I don't want to search my life by the light of human understanding. I'm going to search my life by the light of your word. Your word is a light unto my path. It is a lamp unto my feet I thank you father that you have chosen me for this moment in time so take me firmly by the hand and lead me into a radical life change God merge truth and love I want to be that person who lives truth truth and loves well. well. Anoint me me to be fearless fearless in a day day where so many many are captive captive to the fear of man. man. Begin it with me. me. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 And amen.